Hello and welcome to the Sunday Slate Breakdown video for Week 11. I'm your host, Matthew Amato, joined here by Jason Gilbo, Jacob Blaine, and Stephanie Oti. we got the Detroit Lions on the road against the New York Giants. So while the Buffalo Bills party it up in Ford Field, they'll be on the road in New Jersey taking on Daniel Jones and his explosive rushing offense. Stephanie, how are you feeling about this game? Pretty close spread between two teams who have, frankly, just played a lot better than people expected them to. Yeah, I was looking at this one. I wanted Saquon Barkley's rushing yards didn't hit for me last week, and I wanted to take it in this spot, but I don't think that they can rely on him entirely in this one. I do have the Giants covering the three at home, but the Lions offense, it, it's hit or miss. It, it has opportunities to, to make explosive plays with the passing attack, but uh, we've seen them be shut down by defenses that are worse than the Giants. Uh, I still think that they have the potential to score enough to make the Giants have to to play uh, their best offense and maybe take some risks as well. So I was looking at his receiving yards, 22 and a half. I think I might like to take that one instead. Um, but looking at the Lions defense, it's not much better against the pass either. So I think that's where they can get an opportunity there. They're 31st against the run, 160.9 rushing yards allowed per game. So I, I do expect him to have a big game, but I don't think it's just going to be just his run game. So I like his receiving yards. Uh, the game, I think it should come down to the final minute, uh, hence the, the three-point spread. But I do think that the Giants defense will be the one that triumphs over this one. So I do have them winning by three, and I like them at home in this one as well. Yeah. Uh, I tend to lean your side, Stephanie. Jacob, what about yourself? Yeah, this was a tough one to handicap for me on, on the spread. Um, I think there are reasons to like both teams. On the Giants' side, obviously this Lions defense has been atrocious all year, and Jared Goff um, historically has really struggled on the road. Their offense as a whole has been a lot worse on the road this season, and the the, uh, the Giants are going to blitz the crap out of Jared Goff, and like typically he hasn't been the best against the blitz throughout his career. But you look at this Giants team, and they really got thoroughly outplayed by the Texans last week. The Texans should have won that game, had several opportunities to do so. Um, and you look at these two teams, and they're back-to-back -back in DVOA. They both have 4.3 expected wins on Football Outsiders. Uh, the Giants are 7-1 and one in one-possession games. Gotten rather lucky with that. The Lions are 2-4 and four in one-possession games. So I think these teams are a lot closer in terms of quality than their records suggest. Um, there is a bit of a letdown factor for the Lions, though, after two massive divisional wins over the Packers and Bears, now going on the road, out of conference, um, or out of division, I mean. And then you also look at the Giants, and there's a look ahead with the Cowboys on Thursday on Thanksgiving, which is a massive game for their divisional chances. So, altogether, like, there's a lot of reasons to like both sides on the spread, and it was really difficult for me to pick one of them. I think it's, I think that's a really good point. The the one line before we get to you, Jason, that stands out for me, and it, it's why I haven't made the Giants my three an official bet is a I want to know how much Swift is going to be used in this game. But uh, B, it's just that those average line yards by the, by the Detroit Lions, like that offensive line is so good, and it's only going to get better. Um, and I really think, you know, how much time of possession could they have in this game? And that's what I'm I'm kind of scared off the Giants minus three. Maybe if even if it was minus two and a half, I'd be on them. But Jason, you're not scared. You're not a pansy like me. No, I'm not. Um, <laughs> I like the Giants minus three here. It's I. I definitely agree, like, there's some stuff here that you... Like, I can always make the case for the Lions. Like, I just feel like that's been the case for the last year and a half, is, like, I like this team and they're a fun team to bet on. But, um, Matt, to your point, like, the adjusted line yards, this offensive line's really good. Unfortunately, we're just... We're not going to know how healthy Swift is. Um, I mean, that's been the case really for the last few weeks. Like, I, I just... I don't think he's healthy. I just kind of think they're also just going to keep him really limited the rest of the year. Like, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see, you know, not a full game on him for the rest of the way. And, you know, I mentioned on the best bets, like, Hawkinson's gone. Um, Jamal Williams, like, I, he's a fun guy. I like him, but, like, he's not really that explosive of a player. Um, and behind this great offensive line, like, he hasn't really done anything that shows me, oh, he can really rip apart this Giants run defense. Like, it's been pretty pedestrian over the last few weeks, and, like, they have faced some decent run defense, but uh, overall decent overall defenses, but run defenses have been pretty poor, and, like, they just really haven't been able to get anything going. Uh, they're going to put a lot of rely to rely a lot on golf this week, and I just don't like a road game in a windy, cold day in New Jersey. 
um, for him to really thrive in this spot. And I just think between Barkley and Daniel Jones and the rushing attack against this defense, they're going to be able to sustain drives. They're going to be able to put points on the board. Whether they finish off those drives is going to be the key part. Um, if they kind of settle for a lot of field goals, it, that's going to leave the chance for obviously the Lions to hang around this game. Like the red zone importance of putting up points is obviously big in every game, but something between these two teams that Jacob mentioned that don't actually have a ton of separation when you look at both sides of the ball, um, those little things is where it comes down to. And I kind of understand not wanting to bet on that spot, but I like the way Darius Slayton's kind of gotten going over the last few weeks. Daniel Jones and Brian Dable have just kind of had this kind of system where it's like we just don't, we won't make mistakes. You know, we're going to have drives and we're going to kind of rely on some lucky defense because of kind of who they place this year. Um, I think that just kind of continues this week. And as Jacob said, the the Lions really haven't deserved these last two wins. Like they've been outgamed by over 100 yards. You know, in both those matchups, and they've relied on just insane turnover luck. And the turnovers really haven't really happened with the Giants this year. So I think at home they take care of business. And the look-ahead spot is certainly there. But I think knowing just how important every game is and the way Dable coaches, um, like I don't worry about that, I guess, a ton. Yeah, I guess that's fair. Uh, And something that hasn't been brought up is uh, I personally believe there is a stupidly high coaching advantage on the New York Giants side of the ball. I do agree with you, Jacob, that – the offensive... Another shot at Dan Campbell. I can't, you know, that's two in one video. I don't the like offensive. This. Matt went from loving Dan Campbell to Whoa, hating Dan I Campbell. Never, a matter I of never months. loved Dan Campbell. I have always been against that kind of coaching. I have always <laughs> been right, against fine. that You've kind always of had coaching. Hatred for Dan. I do think the offensive playing calling on Detroit's good, but I do think the overall game management in the defensive side of the ball is just so terrible that <sighs> you're almost talking me into it. I will also say on the weather standpoint, Stephanie, you brought this up in your video where you were, you sat with a sports meteorologist and talked about it. The winds are projected to be 16 to 20 miles per hour, which is over that kind of key number of 15, where you start to see it really affect passing the football. Yeah, under. So. It, it, yeah, uh, that's that's when you, uh, he told me take unders, unders, unders in those big win games. 15 miles per hour is the mark. So if it's starting at 16 then yeah, start to look at the under. And with it set at 46, I think that that does look like a good spot. Yeah. So uh, my opinion on this game is it's a no bet. I'm actually going to thoroughly enjoy watching these two teams go at it. I do, you know, by game time, I may have some rushing props down in the comments down below, but one that Jason, Jacob, and myself all like is Daniel Jones over 34 and a half. He's been a rushing machine. Basically, Justin Fields Jr. over here, and uh, I think he <laughs> continues to have great rushing success. Um, and like we just said, it, it may be a little bit harder to pass the ball, tends to lean the under, so I'm happy with that being really my only official bet at this point in the game. Can I talk a couple of other player props? Yeah, go ahead. Um, so... The weather is concerning to me, and I'm not locking this in until I know more about that situation because Jared Goff and the wind is a yikes. But Amon R. St. Brown should have a good game against the Blitz. Um, he ranks second in wide, among wide receivers in targets per route run against the Blitz, and he has a whopping 44% team target share against the Blitz. We saw Jared Goff have success against the Bears Blitz last week, and a lot of it came through yards after the catch to Amon Ra. Um, the Giants have allowed big games to kind of pseudo slots. Uh, C.D. Lamb... Randall Cobb and Christian Kirk have averaged 94 receiving yards against them, so definitely a decent matchup for him. Um, and then the other guy who I'd be targeting here would be Darius Slayton, uh, potentially, depending on the weather. Uh, he's been a lot more involved in the offense recently. I thought it might be Wanda Robinson, but he's been leading the team. Uh, he ranks ninth in the air yard share, uh, 37% since week five. And the Lions have been very vulnerable against the passes we talked about. So those are two I'll have my eye on. Not locking them in yet. I want to wait and see what the weather, but just to, to give a little teaser there. All right, so the official bets for this game, we have the New York Giants minus three for Jason and Stephanie. Daniel Jones over three, four and a half rushing yards for Jason, Jacob, and myself. And then Stephanie was leaning the over. I believe the weather kind of affects things here, and uh, we'll see what it looks like at game time. And like you mentioned, Jacob, it's going to affect your player props, so obviously a big thing to keep an eye out for this one. It's going to wrap it up for this game. That's going to wrap things up. Thank you guys for watching. As always, if you liked this video, drop a like. If you did not, a dislike. Comment down below your favorite bets. Hit the subscribe button to see more content like this. And we'll see you for the next one very soon.